I think International House is just as important today as it was. And I think unless a man who changes, it always will be. Back when it started in the 1920s, there wasn't much international travel, much international student. So International House in itself is a little island, but it's got the responsibility of upholding the mission. I was there only a few days, and I was standing in line in the cafeteria with my tray, waiting in line to get to the food, and there were some Hungarians speaking behind me. So I'm listening, and um, how shall I put this? <laughs> After a while, I heard one of them say in Hungarian something to the effect, I wouldn't mind making love to this one, meaning me. And I turned around and I answered in Hungarian, I believe it. And of course, they almost <laughs> fell to the ground. And it luckily was not my husband, but they were the ones who introduced me to my husband. And that's how we met. I just found it almost like a movie setting. I loved the Sunday night suppers and I, I loved the, the dances, what they had. It was just, I was young, I was impressionable, and I just, um, I just thought it was so much fun. I, I really, really enjoyed it. They're coming from all over in this place. Wonderful people speaking there, living there. I was looking through this nice volume that I had just described a number of the people that were here. President of Ireland, Dick Holbrook, who made a big impression on international diplomacy. But by far the most popular was Nelson Mandela. I never saw such an enthusiastic crowd. Having people come to the house and speak to young people, I mean, where do you find that really? And the variety from uh, somebody like Bishop Tutu or a diplomat or a writer or a composer. I mean, we have so much variety there and there are so many angles you can look at the world at from, from these different personalities and knowledgeable people. And I just found it, it's, it's a wonderful source. I think recent experience suggests that there still is a, a desire, a need for International House. Why don't more people know about the International House? This still is a cause that will appeal to a lot of people, it should appeal to a lot of people. The idea that brotherhoods shall prevail is much more important today than it was in those days. David Rockefeller is my idol. He was, to me, the personification of noblesse oblige. He played a big role when he was a very young man. He was there at the right time. He was saying the right things. He always played a big role in international affairs. He was a, you know, a remarkable descendant of the Rockefeller <laughs> tradition. Just and he was widely respected around the world. He was so liked by the students and so respected. He was there for events and he wasn't puffy and he wasn't, you know, he, he, he was so normal. And a little bit of it was also with Abby, his niece. Abby was a little bit like David in many ways also. I said she was even more involved, of course, and more hands-on. I just thought he was just a great guy. My last encounter with David Rockefeller, I went to the restaurant called Grenouille, and he was sitting there with a very attractive young lady. And I was going by, and I said, good evening, Mr. Rockefeller. And he said, let me introduce you to my granddaughter. And I said, sure, that's what they all say, you know? <laughs> and he was laughing. And that was the last time I have seen him, really. Yeah.